And while the EU and Turkey have agreed to stop so-called irregular migration, thousands of refugees are still waiting in Idomeni on the Greek-Macedonia border, hoping to get into Europe. They've been giving their views on the New Deal. At last, they tell all the people at 17 of March, we see what we can do. So, more than this. Yeah, of course, that f make us feel uh, disappointed. You know, uh, uh, most of people here have a hope that they will open the borders, at least for the, those people stuck here in, in, in the border. But uh, finally, they said no way to go through these borders. This make us feel so bad. Well, to Idemeni now and Alijan Ayanlar, who's there for us. Uh, Alijan, what's the situation where you are this morning? Kamali, I can tell you it was another rough and difficult night for some nearly 13,000 refugees here in Idomeni. Not only because all eyes and ears were in Brussels last night, eagerly awaiting the decisions of that critical EU-Turkey summit, a summit that could very well determine their fate, but also because of the massive amount of rainfall that was brought in by uh, the, the, the thun thunderstorms. Now, we're outside the main campgrounds here in Idomeni, out in the fields, and I can tell you that it's partially flooded, dotted with puddles, and extremely muddy. Here to my right, I want to show you some, uh, some pictures. We're seeing uh, a, a, a group of uh, Syrian families that have relocated their tents, uh, trying to dig up new dry land after they woke up in several centimeters of water, of rain, from last night's thunderstorm. Now, when you go back to last night's summit, some key details, some key issues still remain, like how the European Union will actually help Greece cope with the massive influx of refugees that are in the country, which now stands at about 35,000 people. But for now, here in Idomeni, the border remains effectively shut, effectively closed, with only a few hundred refugees from certain areas in Syria uh, uh, and Iraq being allowed to pass through. And that's only a handful when you consider that 13,000 people are here. And not only is the bottleneck growing because more and more people are coming, but it's also keeping families apart. Idomeni, once a quiet border village of farmland and fields, now, a sprawling tented city, home to thousands of refugees. <laughs> On the ground, it's a place of hopes. Now, gone. Macedonia has imposed border controls that have only allowed a handful of refugees to pass. This route is now not so much a bottleneck as a dead end. Maybe Athena. Maybe I'll stay here. Maybe... Uh... Oh, I don't know. Sleep and eat. Just sleep and eat. Why? I don't know. This is what daily life is here. Thousands of people with only a few dozen toilets to use. And queuing for food for hundreds of meters. The refugees have been told that their best hope is to return to Athens and apply for asylum. But many see that as a backward step. And it's this border fence that divides them from what they see as their future, and in some cases, from their families. Emjid left Aleppo 18 months ago after two of his brothers were killed in a mortar attack. He risked the perilous journey across the Aegean Sea to Greece only to be stopped here. His two other brothers made it to Germany seven months ago, but he fears it could now be years before he sees them again. <laughs> I hold on to hope that I'll be reunited with my brothers, he tells me. But my hope is fading. How long am I going to wait? Until God permits, he says. Like many families in Idomeni, Emjid wants to live in safety. But even more, he wants to be close again to his family. Adijan Ayanlar, TRT World, Idomeni, on the Greece-Macedonia border.